Hey, hello, I'm Julie Jo. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're not new here, welcome back. Today, I'm responding to a response to my last video on Brittany Anderson. I've covered her at least three other times in my couple, few years of being on YouTube. I think just a couple years. And this is the first time she's responded. And why is this the first time that she's responding to me? Honestly, I think her business is struggling. I think she's been insecure about it probably because I know Jessie Lee Ward's business is not doing great either. Jessie Lee Ward just lost a huge leg. Brittany had to start a new Instagram because she wasn't getting enough like interaction, I guess, on her old one. Anyway, all that to say she responded and it's an interesting response, but, but it's not surprising. What she says is not surprising at all. It's something we've heard time and time again. However, I do wanna go through it and break it down a little bit. And I wanna hear what y'all think as well. My editor, Ava, and I, Ava, shout out to Ava. She has a YouTube, you can find it below in the description. I have put together this little clip, a series of things that Brittany has said that I thought might be interesting to watch. We'll cover her stories and then her video and her stories, and then we'll go from there. Buckle up. Let's start with her first one. She said, you know what I'll never understand? The people who say hateful, derogatory things about you when they've never even spoken to you and the fact that there are people who believe these people and join in on saying horrible things about other humans. We'll stop right there because I would love to know what hateful and derogatory things that I said about Britney. I'm gonna interject a little, a series of clips here. Just watching, I don't know, two previous videos of Britney's, not including any top fails or any horrible things she said other than just in these two videos. Now, some of this is just very derogatory and hateful things that she says to people, but it's also very shame-filled and very angry and just overall rude and mean. But I think the majority of it is manipulative. I'm gonna break you down as much as I can and make you fear as much as you can. And then I'm gonna build you up and try to make you think that prove it will help you. And that's what a lot of this is gonna be. I'll stop talking and let you watch B.A. Boss Babe's best moments. Because I'm here to tell you, even my four-year-old knows how to be brave. Being broke and not being able to feed your kids and living paycheck to paycheck for the next 40 years is much more frightening than any of the things that you are afraid of about this business. I don't know who to talk to. Okay, you have what, a thousand friends on Facebook? Have you had a conversation with all of them? I'm like a social media disease. Y'all could not get rid of me. If you block me on Facebook, there I am on Instagram. Block me on Instagram, there I am on TikTok. Block me on TikTok, there I am on LinkedIn. Okay, like you can't get rid of me because I'm so consistent. I love y'all. I promise this is all out of love. This is all out of love because y'all are so good. So, so good. And I love y'all so, so much. Okay. So I know y'all feel like there's probably been a little bit of tough love and a little bit of spankings this whole time, but I'm about to wrap this up with one big old spanking for y'all. Okay. You don't listen. It's really hard to feel sorry for people who have access to people making a hundred grand, 250 grand, half a million dollars, a million, two, five, ten million dollars in this profession, pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and y'all do nothing with it. It's really hard to feel sorry for y'all. You cannot tell me you're sick and tired of your life and then not change anything. You're lying. It doesn't hurt bad enough. It doesn't suck bad enough. Or you would change something. No way, they always say you're one decision away from an entirely different life. But if you really think about it, every single leap you have taken in your life, has it not transformed the entire direction of your life? I didn't show up for people to say, you are so inspiring, thank you so much, I needed that, and then do nothing with it. I didn't show up for you. What is going to have to shake your entire world, flip it upside down, and smack you on the rock bottom for you to wake up and realize you are playing so damn small? When was the last time you tried out and gave it everything you have on anything in your life? If you are not setting the example for your kids, who are you expecting to do it? What do y'all think? That's just very few. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I have top fails with her in it several times of her saying horrible things. You're welcome to go watch those videos, but those two videos in particular are two that I did, like one was a few months ago and then one was like a year ago. So it just goes to show that she's kind of stayed the same. It's interesting that me criticizing her is hateful and derogatory, but her saying these things to people isn't. What she said in that those previous clips that I showed are a thousand times worse than anything I've said about her. There's this one think that I'm gonna apologize for saying. I'll show y'all it and then I'm gonna apologize because I think it was a bit much, but I don't even think she's seen it. 
I don't care. I feel like I should probably apologize for it. Okay, let's watch. You know the question, like, would you rather fight one big duck or a lot of little ducks? And I just see her. Like, would I rather fight one big Brittany Anderson or a lot of little Brittany Andersons? I don't know. What, what about you? Would you rather fight, like, one big Brittany Anderson, like, or a lot of little Brittany Andersons? I would like to apologize to Brittany for saying that because it is rude. It's funny, but it's rude. You know what I mean? Probably the meanest thing I've said about her. Let's move on to the next section. This one we get a lot, which is funny because they do way worse stuff to us and say way worse stuff about us, but we don't respond with this because it's ridiculous. She says, I pray to God no one unalives themselves because of these people truly the worst humans who exist. So she starts off by saying the people who say hateful derogatory things about you when they've never even spoken to you. Brittany, you've never spoken to me, so how do you know I'm one of the truly the worst humans who exist? How do you know that I fall in that category? You don't. And criticizing is not hateful and not derogatory. It's a basic human right at least in the United States. The section on her saying, I pray to God no one unalives themselves because of these people. People like to use this a lot. They like to weaponize people who are in a terrible position mentally. They like to weaponize the idea of us feeling terrible and try to make us look like we are people who make people kill themselves because they don't know what else to do or say and they can't respond to any of the criticism, but they can try to make themselves look better. They can virtue signal and they can uh, try to make people think that we make people kill themselves. I'm gonna say this once and only once. Shame on you for weaponizing mental health, for taking a terrible position that someone's in that is awful, sad, terrible, and weaponizing it to try to make us look like we do that to people and try to make yourself look better. You're way worse in every sense of the word for simply using that. As someone who has tried to unalive myself and has talked about it openly, shame on you. That's a shitty thing to do for anyone that uses that phrasing, that example for being critiqued. What that shows me is that you love to dish it. You love to be rude, mean, hateful to people, which I've just shown several instances of you fear-mongering people. You love to do that, but you can't take the critique of your shitty actions. Okay. I know that one was intense. This next one had me cackling. So she said, some have doubted my story about hitting my bonus last month at 11.59 saying I placed an order under my dog. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave this here. Love and light always. Time out, time out, time out. Er, hit the buzzer. <laughs> Love and light always, but weaponizing people unaliving themselves? Solid. So July 31st, 2023 at 11.59, your customer, Jessica Romer, placed uh, one order of the whatever. Brittany, I didn't know your dog's name was Jessica. <coughs> Just kidding. Am I? All right, we're moving on. I just thought that might be funny to look at. Okay, here is her talking to us. It's not just me. She's also talking to y'all who were in the comments. Let's watch. Okay, so the girls are dropped off at school. And I wanted to share with you guys one of the things that I learned about my, from my hate video yesterday that people did about me. It was me. It wasn't hate, it was criticizing you for the terrible things and the wrong things and the lies that you say. But you know what? I understand that you don't get the concept of criticizing. Or maybe you do and you choose to make people think that it wasn't that so that they won't go watch it and they'll just think it's hate. But you know what? I'm gonna let that one slide. Is that they were like disgusted that I hustled at the end of the month. They were like repulsed at the fact that I messaged 200 people to help them get started on their health journey. And that I was so determined to hit my goal that I was willing to do that. Like, I wish I was exaggerating, but the amount of people that were repulsed that I work hard to hit my goals was almost concerning for humanity. I wanna revisit that actually. Let's revisit that, shall we? Also, thank y'all for the almost 10,000 views in like 24 hours. That's great, y'all are awesome. Okay, here's literally what I said about the 200 people. She has to be talking about some of y'all in the comments because this is what I said about it, okay? So we were like 36 hours into this. So I only had 12 hours left and I had messaged, now I'm not cold messaging, I had followed up with over 200 people that had told me they were ready to start ketones and hadn't yet started their journey. Over 200 people. 
okay? So we had 12 hours left, then 10 hours left, then seven hours left, then five hours left. And I had told all of my friends, like, I'm going for this goal. I'm making it happen no matter what. My question for y'all is, do you think she copy and pasted the same message or close to the same message to the 200 people? How is she going to reach out to 200 people in like, what, 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever? Copy and paste, baby. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Hopefully she remembered to change the name at the beginning, right? Let me know your thoughts on that. So that's what I said in that section. I'm a bit confused about what she means. Let's watch it again and see if I did what she said, okay? Is that they were like disgusted that I hustled at the end of the month. They were like repulsed at the fact that I messaged 200 people to help them get started on their health journey. And that I was so determined to hit my goal that I was willing to do that. Like, I wish I was exaggerating, but the amount of people that were repulsed that I work hard to hit my goals was almost concerning for humanity. I'm pretty sure she has to be talking about some of y'all in the comments because I literally talked, like you saw in that video, about her probably copying and pasting everything. Did I look repulsed? Nair. Am I repulsed? About what in particular, I guess? Her grinding? No, I don't really care about her grinding. That gives me the ick. I'm not repulsed. I think repulsed is way more intense than giving the ick. Listen, I don't know what, what some of y'all said in the comments, but you really, you really got to her. Like, like, I can't believe she sent that many messages. Like, who does that? People who give a shit about their future. You know? Wait, we gotta watch that again together. <laughs> Brittany's so funny, though. Watch. Like, I can't believe she sent that many messages. Like, who does that? People who give a shit about their future. You know? That's the best. What's interesting about that is, first, she is a comedian. And I love that for her. But she talks about it being people who give a shit about their future. And I get what she means, because I, I think she thoroughly, she thoroughly gives a shit about her future, right? I mean, I think the majority of us do. But I also give a shit about my future. And I don't have to send 200 messages. I just go to work. Or I make YouTube videos. I do pretty good on YouTube, too. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Enjoy it. So grateful for y'all. I find it intriguing, the idea that she needs to send 200 messages in the last 48 hours for her future. And hear me out, because it might be a little hard to understand if you haven't been in an MLM, but the stress that you get of the last couple days of the month is unmatched in a lot of ways. I mean, there's obviously more stress in other areas of life than that, but when it comes to work and stuff, this is like stress that is so intense that you can't really sleep. And I know a lot of people have experienced that. But if you haven't been in an MLM, you might not understand this type of like MLM boss babe stress I'm talking about. It's like the only thing you can do is work your MLM business. And if you're not working your MLM business, you feel bad about it. I am not repulsed by it. I'm sad for her because I know that stress and that stress sucks. She talked about her having to take a shower to try to like reboot, to try to redo. That's sad that you have to do that because of your job. I've been in a position where I had a job that I hated. I didn't want to hate it. And the night before I would have to go in, especially Sundays, I would cry and cry and cry to my husband. And then I finally quit the job. That sucked too, but it didn't suck as bad as trying to live through it. So the idea that a lot of people experience that kind of stress the last two days of the month, every month, because they're trained to feel that way, is icky to me. Anyway, that's that's long-winded, but I feel strongly about that and sad for her. And this is me knowing that some of the people that watched and supported that video are now following me on social media. Y'all, I'm not your mom. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but just leave her alone. Actually, like, I don't care what you do, but like, please don't come after her from my video. Actually, I prefer you just to not talk to her at all or watch any of her stuff. That's why I'm here so that you can see it and that we could talk in the comments. <laughs> not apologizing for a single second of hard work that I put in every single day. Why would you apologize for that, okay? Is it the fact you should apologize for deceiving people into joining your business so that you can make more money off of them knowing they probably won't make money? Because I know my life is better than theirs. How do I know my life is better than theirs without knowing anything about them? Because I know that your life has to be in a very traumatic space for you to spend time okay talking terribly and saying horrific things about someone that you don't even know i know your life cannot be better than mine if you're talking that way about strangers there's literally no god-given way so mixing up ketones and uh, we're gonna go for a walk 
She is pissed. And now we're gonna go back over it and really break it down together, shall we? Because I know my life is better than theirs. How do I know my life is better than theirs without knowing anything about them? Because I know that your life has to be in a very traumatic space for you to spend time talking terribly and saying horrific things about someone that you don't even know. But you're saying all this stuff about me and people in the comments. That we said these terrible things and blah, 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 which we didn't. And that we're terrible people. I mean, you literally say in this first one, truly the worst humans who exist, but you don't even know us. So using your logic, why are you saying anything? My question for you next, Brittany, is then what about Jesse? Let me explain. You say, because I know that your life has to be in a very shitty traumatic space for you to spend time talking terribly and saying horrific things about someone you don't even know. Jesse doesn't know me and she said some pretty horrible things and threatened me. Do you have the same energy for her? Or do you just say that for those who critique you? I think that's a fair question. I'd love to know the answer to it. I know your life cannot be better than mine. If you're talking that way about strangers, there's literally no God-given way. You know that, you're, that my life cannot be better than yours because I'm talking a certain way about strangers. There's no God-given way. I think my life is better for one reason. I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons, but let me put it this way. My life is better for specifically in this instance, one reason reason. I don't have to send 200 messages in the last 48 hours of the month. You do. That is a sad and miserable life to live. I know that because I've been there. It's hard. It weighs you down. It makes an impact on your mental health. And that's understandable. What's not understandable is how you talk to people, Brittany. How you disrespect them and fear monger. Just, just a couple videos out of all the videos that you've made that I've reacted to. I showed those clips you say that to people all the time. I think Brittany needs to do some self-reflection. One, she weaponized someone unaliving themselves. That's, that is the lowest point on the totem pole, I think, that she can go and she went there. But also all of this other stuff. Whatever this was, it was sad. I'm just, honestly, at this point, I kind of pity Brittany because not only is she this person, right? Not only is she struggling, is she having to lie about what I said or what you said in the comments or whatever, she also has to do it while being under Jesse Lee Ward in an MLM. That in of itself is hard. So I hope that she takes some time to personally reflect. Okay, now you're sitting here probably going, Julie Jo, why are you wearing a different sweater? What happened? Why are things looking different? BA Boss Babe posted a Facebook post about it. So I'll go ahead and talk about it. She said, hate on the internet is real, dot, 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 dot. But let's talk about it for a minute. I was sent a video last night where someone made an entire video about how terrible of a person I am. I did not watch the video, but I did read 10 of the comments. They were furious and disgusted that I hustled on the last day of the month. Literally, how can you say that I made a video about how terrible of a person you are, but you didn't watch it? So you have no idea what I said in the video. You really don't know because I didn't make the comments. You don't know what I said and you you still say she made an entire video about how terrible of a person I am. She continues and quoting the comments. I would hate to work like that at the end of the month. That sounds so stressful. Why would you message 200 people? I bet she cold messaged them all with, hey girl, and on and on and on. No matter how grown you are, people being hateful will always put you in a defensive mode. I don't believe that's actually not true. I think you're defensive because you're struggling like with your business. She continues, I said nothing to them, but I wanted to share something I took away from the comments I read. They are disgusted. I work really freaking hard. No, Brittany, we are disgusted by you and many other people in MLMs who deceive and take advantage of vulnerable people to make money. Simply put, that's it. We actually think, and I'm not the only one, a lot of us think that a lot of y'all work very hard, have great work ethic, obviously a little too much sometimes, but if you put your energy towards something good for the world, you would do very well. You wouldn't know that because you don't listen. You don't watch the video. You just say, I made an entire video about how terrible of a person you are. She continues, they are mad I'm working hard towards my goals. If the worst thing they have to say about me is that I work too hard, then I'm so damn proud of the life I've created. So my guess is you've not watched one single video that I've made. How can you have an opinion on it if you have no idea what I said? They don't want you to think that we criticized them and critiqued them based on their actions. They want you to think that we are bullying them. One is really sounds really bad. The other one is fair. She continues, I show up with love. I give value freely. I teach other women to be confident in exactly who they are. I serve anyone who needs help. I spread myself thin putting others first. And Princey, working on this. Brittany, you are so heroic. Such an incredible 
amazing person for all that you do. She continues, and I am proud to work hard every damn day. You will never see me apologize for my work ethic. My work ethic is one of my biggest prides in my life. So again, Brittany. <laughs> No, I'm yelling at y'all instead of her. I'm just kidding. I'm not yelling at you. That's not what we're talking about, babe. You missed the whole point. But I actually think she missed it on purpose. I also don't think she knows the point because she didn't watch the video. My gosh. It came straight from my mama, who was a single mother at the age of 17 and gave me the damn world. She got it from her mama, who was 58 years old, still working in a steel mill that was 110 degrees inside day in and day out. Brittany, can I be really, really frank? That, I don't really care about that. Like I'm apathetic towards it. But you're trying to appeal to other people's vulnerabilities. You're trying to appeal to them. It's a fallacy. An appeal to emotion fallacy is a type of informal fallacy that relies on emotional reactions rather than logical reasoning to persuade the audience. It can take many forms, such as appealing to fear, pity, anger, guilt, pride, or happiness. So there she goes using another fallacy because she's got nothing left. Her goal isn't to get to us. Her goal is to get to her audience, to hook on and make them think we're terrible. We're bad. I'm awful. I made a video about how terrible of a person she is about her looks and everything. And I bullied her. She wants her audience to believe that. She said, I will apologize when I'm wrong. When I hurt people or make mistakes. My work ethic? Nah. I will never be sorry for that. I will always fight for my goals and I hope you do too. XOXO, Britney. It's Britney, bitch. You know, that was Britney Spears. Okay. I'm not calling her a bitch y'all chill you know i keep saying i'm curious as to why this this video bothered her over others but i think it's that she's struggling in her business right now her business is not doing as well as it used to because i don't think anyone in jesse's downline is doing very well like i feel like the majority i'm not saying everyone but the majority of people in her downline are probably either missing ranks or not making as much money or whatever. So there was that. I thought I'd add this in because I thought it was important. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> there is one thing I want to cover before we go, and that's a comment I saw underneath one of my videos. Just Cody. I think I think you're Kojo on here now. I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember because you changed your picture and your name. And she says, she was my upline. At first I thought she was sweet, but it didn't take long to realize that she was turning into a Jesse Lee cult leader really fast. When she encouraged me to be working while my husband was in the hospital after a major head injury, I pulled back really hard. It just felt so wrong. And she used my sales during that time to basically rub everyone else's nose in it and shame them for not being as dedicated. No excuses was what they said. I think that kind of sums up the situation in a nutshell of Brittany Anderson. Let me be perfectly clear. I don't think Brittany Anderson's a bad person. You might disagree. I don't think that she's a bad person. I think she is under the spell of Jesse Lee. I think she's a cult follower, but she's a top leader and she does know what she's doing and she says some pretty stuff. So while I don't think she's a terrible person, I do think she does terrible things sometimes. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if she responds again, then I'll just have to make another video, won't I? And if you haven't seen my original video on Britney, I'll try to link it above, or maybe I'll put it in the description below. That usually seems to be easier. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye. I don't care about what has been I only care about yours